G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my live painting today. Today we're going to do a, I'm going to teach you how I would paint this um, beach, rocky beach scene. And Pirata Hasden, if you're watching, sweetheart, love, hugs and kisses to you, my sweet darling. Okay, now, I've got the canvas there in 40 centimetres by 30, no, 30. 30 centimetres by 42 centimetres uh, or 12 inch by 16 inch. The sizes will be in the description below after I finish this live and I will also put the colours down there as well. So while you're all the way over there, I'm just going to get started up because this involves some blending just for a nice sky colour. And then we'll go down when time lets us to do the bottom half. So I need my retarder. Where is the retarder? Here it is here. Got a holster for it. And I don't know why I'm not using it. Now, someone said, "How much retarder do I use?" Well, all right. Now, there's my craft paint. Someone asked, "How much percentage? What's the ratio?" I live in pretty medium, not too hot, not too damp area. It's pretty average. Okay, it's a cool night here, but I'm putting about that much. That much works for me. I've used it quite a lot, and I know what works for me and what doesn't. So. Always practice procedures when you're, when you're learning them, okay? And that you can't go wrong. If, and if you're going to ask a question about something, if you're going to ask a question about something, that's your brain telling you, well, try it out on a canvas and see if it works for you. And if it does, you've answered your question. All right, so we'll get up here. Now, I'm going to do the sky half first. So I'll just get all this crisscrossed into the two for the canvas like so, I better move my glasses. Now I'm gonna go just to my horizon line. I haven't taped it up yet, because I'm gonna go beyond that later. So what I'm doing, I'm just getting this right onto the canvas, get everything in there, and now I'll push it through like that. There we go. Now I'll add the sky colors, but before I do that, um, I just got to uh, wash this brush. So I'll come over here. I'll bring you over to the sink here. Where are we? Let's go over there. I'll grab me bin. And I'll just give this brush a good wash and give it a severe flogging in that bucket as well. That way it's clean, ready to do me sky the way I want to paint me sky. Right, I'm using cerulean blue on my sky. I like cerulean blue. Um, I will be adding some uh, very minimal colours to create some hazy horizons. So I've got some grey there on the palette. And I've got some alins, alinserin crimson, or permanent alinserin, this one. Permanent alinserin. Just a very tidbit of that. Don't need much of that, it's very strong. That's gonna come in handy later on. Now I'm gonna do the sky first. So I pick up the cerulean blue and all that white on the canvas is gonna dull this color down. See how bright and cartoony that is? So I'll start at the top and I'll just crisscross it all in everywhere. I don't know why my aircon's making some farting noise now. Gee whiz. It's never done that before. Now I'm filming live, it decides to make a noise. There's my sky just all pushed in there. Now smoothing that. Get it all in there. Check where you, as you smooth it, check what's happening there. Go. Get some of that down there. Push it around. Control your painting. You're the control. You're in control of it. Don't be scared to get some paint there like that. Okay, there's me sky. Now I want to get the grey, a little bit of grey. So we're gonna grab some of the grey. Pick up some of this and 
See that lens from Crimson? I want to get the tiniest bit of that. Not even that much. Just very, oh wow, that's too much, Ian. Too much. Let's get a bit more grey into that. I'm going to have to gobble up all that grey as well. See how much I used and how powerful it was? Because you want this to be subtle in the sky. This is the bottom horizon, which is going to be probably, where's my horizon line? I better mark it about there. So this is going to gobble up the sky about that much there. Okay, so I want to get that in gently, softly, break that edge up where it's meeting the blue. So I'm pushing it up, crisscrossing it, pushing it up. And now I'll gradiate that through the blue there. Okay. Now I want a little bit of white. I'll get the... Um... What did I do with it? I've got every colour ready except for the titanium white. I'll have to use my new tube. I'll find it later. I need some titanium white. And um, back down here on the palette. I, I'm going to wipe that brush, just wiping it, I'm not washing it. It'll be interesting to know if I can hear that aircon on the replay. Now I'm getting the blue again, and I want to mix up some of the grey blue. Just well, pretty much all of it now. There we go. Getting a grey blue. Just at the bottom of that grey that we put there. Just at the very bottom here. So there's my horizon line. Just a bit. So it's a bit of a darker blue just there. Now this is all subtle, but it's going to give big impact to the painting. Okay, there we go. Hopefully the light will pick it up. Now I'm going to have to wash this brush so as we can um, get the um, permanent alinsarin in there a lot better. Aircon's making the most noisiest noise tonight. Wow, it's getting worse. Give that a flogging and have a mouthful of my coffee. Okay, back over here. Now, I want a little bit of um, yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre, yellow oxide, yellow ochre. What is retarder used for? Retarder is used, Laurie Edwards, to slow down, oh, where did that go, I've just missed it, to slow down the drying time of your acrylic paint. Now I want some of this with white. Very, see I'm not using that craft paint anymore. That's done its job, that's pretty much primed my surface for the sky where I'm going to blend. Now I'm looking for that right flavour because this is going to be the light behind the sky. It's pretty much white with a tinge of yellow in there. Okay, and this needs to go pretty much, you've got the darker, the grey, pretty much here. Very little. That aircon's making a lot of noise, Reese. Has it always done that? No, it's just like humming from the actual machine there. It's like been very noisy. It's never usually made that noise that I can recall. Now, where are we? Yeah, so I'm just lightly adding this using the tip of the brush where there's no paint. All the paint's here. So when I want to add paint, I'll slide it down. So I'm using the brush to blend that. I'll show you how I add more paint. Now, I want a bit more here, so I'm going to add more paint. So I'm going to tilt the brush. See, I'm tilting the brush, adding paint where I want it. Now I lift it back up again, just using the tip, and I'm blending that into the sky. Get a bit there, and a bit over here, where you want it. Beautiful bit there. That's it. So in hindsight now, I've pretty much got three bands of paint there. Hear it, Reese? 
Wow, I'm gonna to have to turn it off. Just in case it's picking up on this mic. Okay, there's that yellow that I wanted in there. Okay. Now we need a teensy, teensy weeny bit. I wanna see if I got a, that permanent lindrin. I gotta see if I gotta wash the brush. See how much I put in there? <laughs> Not much at all, right? Not much at all. There's gonna be the tiniest little bit more. See on there? Just the tiniest bit we need to add to that. Oh, I'm a bit reluctant to do it, but oh, how's it gonna go? Yeah, I'll probably just put a bit here. Just a bit of it there and blend it. I'm playing with colours. That'll do it. I don't want to just... Whoop, better move the camera so you can see. I've just put a bit of that there. So pretty much got the, the blue. I added the grey with the blue with a bit of permanent alindrin. And then I added the blue-grey back here for the bottom band because the water's going to be about here. And that's the sky. So I need to wash that brush again, lo and behold. So as um, when I do the bottom water half, that's ready to rock and roll. So we've just got a little bit of detail to do to that sky and the top half's finished. Here we go. Give it a flogging. And then we can do the bottom half. This sky is adding atmosphere depth. A bit of simple realism to a painting a beginner can achieve if they just watch and practice. Now we're going to get some more titanium white onto our palette here. So I'll grab some of that and I want some. I'm going to get a brush first. I'll just grab any old brush and I'm going to mix up the cloud colour, okay? Now the cloud colour, we've got some grey there. I want to get some... Let's grab this here, let's say there. Get both of them, get the brush pretty much. Now, a little bit of permanent lindrin. Let's see how we go. A little bit more. It. Now, see that yellow colour here? I'm going to mix some into that. There we go. Beautiful. And then we've got the grey there as well. So this is our cloud. So I'm going to pretty much put my cloud on. Hopefully I can use this brush. I'll put one way down here first. So I'm just putting it on any old way. I'm stamping it on, stamping it on, trying to create. See, I don't like this brush. That's what, you watch, I'll put that down. I'll grab my fan brush and I'll use a fan brush that I like to use. So we can stamp that cloud on the way I want. Get more on there, your dag. There we go, just a small cloud there. And we're going to grab a blending brush and give that a nice subtle blend with some turmoil. Grab yourself a rag when you do this. And I want to kind of blend that up with some turmoil into the sky like that. There's not going to be too many clouds in this sky. Something subtle but effective. That's one. Now I'll pick up some more and we'll do one above it. To pick up some more paint. I'm just quickly getting more paint. And getting the body of this one up there. Something I can turn while I'll put some more in there. He died out a bit, didn't he? Now they got that sun, the sun's gone way down and whatever clouds left in the sky, the, the sun's radiating some of those warm colours up into the 
cloud there. See, I'm giving turmoil at the top to give it a whispery, soft look. Pull it across like that. Look at that. Let's sit that down a bit, make it look a bit more real. There we go. Little bit of subtle cloud in the sky. I'm just going to put some more titanium white there because I've lost most of it. And we're going to add some little bit of grey. So I'm just washing that fan brush that I used. Rinse it. Dab it dry. I want to get some grey. And we'll put it, let's say this colour here. Mix it in there just a bit. We're just adding those colours in the sky. Just to give some weather into those clouds there. So this one I want some at the top there. Oh yeah, look at that. I didn't mix much. I want some in here. I'll blend that. Just softly. See how I've just dabbed that. Sunk it down in there. Dabbed it into it. You got the grey there. It needs that grey. You practice this procedure, you'll get a really handsome, adorable cloud on your sky. Now we can add the yumminess. So I'll just quickly wash that brush again. Always washing the brush you're going to apply new clouds with. Yeah. I use clear medium retarder. Uh, who, who said that? Marie? It's clear. It looks like baby oil. It's not a gel. It's not a gloss. It's a retarder. Clear. It looks like baby oil. Now I'm picking up some just straight titanium white. Those clouds are pretty much done, but they look flat. They look two-dimensional to me. So I'm just going to add the slightest bit of dimension and full-blown yumminess to them. Just like that, and you'll see. This could have had more pinky red into it, but it's my painting, and I'm quite happy to make it look like this. So I'm going to see that you want to keep that vibrancy, the luster, that shine, that brightness there, but sit it down into the background of that cloud lightly, but artistically. Get rid of any patterny lines going on. Yeah, I use Jasonja's or Atelier Retarder. There you go. I'm leaving that luster there, but just sitting it into that cloud. There, you can muck around with clouds till the cows come home. But that'll do for this sky. Who knows, I might put one in later on when I'm finished. But just something in the middle. This is less is more type of painting, this one. All right, now we've got our, um, I'll just show you with this stick there, if you get an idea where the water's gonna be about there. Okay, you can see the depth happening. And then when we get the um, watercolors in, it'll really cr crack your screen with yumminess. Now I've got the, here's the retard I'm using today, Atelier. It works just as good as just Sonja's. Put a bit of that in that white craft paint down there. I've got plenty of craft paint there. I've cleaned this putter on a brush and I'm getting more of that just so as I can paint the bottom half of the water and it's going to blend. Everything's going to blend beautiful for me. So my horizon line's about here. So I'm not going to start there because I've done it before and I end up with a nice blue ridge of paint there and I don't like that so what I'll do I'll start at the bottom getting all this applied like that there we go and then we can slowly but surely bring this up to the horizon line okay so I'm gonna slowly bring it up let's hope I can get a straight line now the line doesn't have to be sharp and in focus because it's the ocean, it's the beach, it's whatever, it's far away. I've still got a ridge of paint there, believe it or not. 
Here we go. It's on there. Now I've got to work out the water colours. That's pretty much ready, ready to blend on my watercolour. So I'm going to grab some more cerulean blue and grey. So I'll put that back over there where it was, cerulean blue. Just getting this down on the palette there, I'll show you. And we'll get some more grey. I've just got mid-tone grey out of the toning grey from a tube. You can mix your own up if you don't have that. And I want to get that sort of silvery, it's pretty much close to white actually. So I want the, I want the blue, I'll come over here and mix this, the temperament I want with the grey. Get it right into your brush so there's no surprises. There we go. Now that's too dark. I'm going to get some white, some titanium white as well. And I'll put it over here and I'll mix that with what's in the brush as well. So we've got that colour and now we've got the white colour over here. Look at that. All right, so this is the watercolour here. And we'll have probably that coming to about there where it's coming onto the shore there, okay? Get your camera up, Ian. Sorry, there, just put that there. The shore's gonna be there. So we're gonna get the water all laced in and then we can put our darker colours in there. So this is the mainly white mixture with the blue and the grey. Now I'm just going to go from the water side into there like that to get rid of that heavier light because I've got to put a shore colour there. Now I'm just going to wipe that brush on a rag, pick up that darker mix that I've got here. G'day David Jinx. Now, put some bands of colour in there, some, look at that, that's all you got to do, boom, and stroke it through, and we'll get another one up here somewhere, get more darkness in there, Ian, come on, don't muck around, I want some more blue into it, I'll add a, I've just added a bit more blue into that mix just to try and darken it up because I wouldn't mind a nice darker edge right on the horizon there like it looks in the picture. There we go, there we go, beautiful. Got kind of greys and whites. Picking up the lighter colour now. Getting some of that in there. All right, now I'm also, I want to grab the permanent alinsarin again, which is in the white there. We'll get some of that just there. Where's the pinky of it? Where are we? Probably gonna go a bit purple. to get some kind of, um, there we go, I've just got that there, <coughs> I've wiped the brush and I just want to get that into the ocean as well, just adding some kind of reflection from there but it's probably going to get lost, I didn't really get much in there but that'll be alright. Okay, now Burr Numbers our next friend bit of burr number and I wonder because I've got to put white but instead of putting white as well I'm going to use a bit of grey because I want that type of different colour so the grey is going to actually be my sand colour but I'm going to slightly tint it with the burr number okay so we're getting that 
to the colour I want. Yeah, that's not bad, Ian. How did you sort that out? A little bit darker. I love mixing on glass. You get such a true mix. Some papers are okay, some grease papers are okay, but they can hinder you. All right, now that corner there, we wanna, where did I do that about here somewhere? Come along like that and then just, get him straight. Now I just want to have a look in the monitor there. I think that's a little bit too grey. I'm just adding more burn umber to that mix because I want it a little bit darker. It's just not as dark as I would like it to be. <clears throat> oh yeah. There we go. See all that white underneath it pulls through, so I'm being aware of that. I'm going to try and mash it out. There we go. Get off the tape. Uh, you can see what's happening. It's a subtle, glassy, but wet look we're going for here. And I want to get my little scrumbling brush. Now, I want to grab some of the... Um, I'm just going to put some of this... Where are we? Where are you? There we go. I'll get the darker colours in first. So I want to grab some of this darker colour and just get some bands across there, indicating... Uh, what do you call it? Water swells. Stamping it on. There we go, like that. Just something about there. There's a bit of a swell there, and it's just indicated with that darker colour there. Did that work? Yes, that's worked okay. Probably something around here, so I'll get a, another kind of a lightly blended in full stroke so you don't get any stop starting areas there we go let me have a look there yeah we're creating something and maybe just a little bit out here somewhere and pull it pull it pull it just creating some darkness within the water out here so we're going to have some rocks out there, believe it or not. Pull that, pull that. Now I want this to be um, dried and washed this brush because I'm going to use it to do the rest of the painting and I don't want this colour stuck in there, okay? I want to fix up all here. So I'm going to wash that. Now rinse it really well. And then dab it in a towel, really dry as I can get it, and rub it even. Because the, the picture doesn't have it, but I want to put it, I want to put some water kissing the edge there before I do the um, rocks. So I've got the grey, the burnt umber there. So we could probably get somewhere the burnt umber's going to go as well in between the rocks. So I'm just loading my stumbler up scrumbling brush whatever you call it my little blending scrumbling brush up with some paint um i could probably let's see how i go i want to just hit it on top of the the brown there just like so i might need another brush to put it on but i'll definitely use this one to scrumble it back see i'm getting that edge from here to this color i'm creating that edge that i want now now I'm going to just wipe that willy-nilly on my board, or even a rag, and 
I want to scramble that in cahoots with the horizon line. What cahoots with the horizon line means, means there's a horizon line there, and be in cahoots with that. So that's the, that's just the angle I'm pulling these brush strokes back with. Okay. Now I will grab a small blending, not a blending brush, sorry, a small fan brush. It's a hog bristle fan brush, this one here. And I'm picking up that white now. And I'm going to put it on with that because I'll get a better controlled edge. And I'm coming along and I'm making that, that edge that I want where the water's touching that dark wet sand there, okay? Just like that. Stop a bit. Don't go too far, otherwise you could get caught in the moment and it won't scrumble the way you want it to. And we've got a nice white tight edge down the bottom where it's hitting the sand. The water's just, just touched the sand there. Okay, we're gonna load up and just finish down to this part of the painting there. Now this is closer so we can go bigger. Bigger all the way there. See how I pushed it down bigger? Same again in cahoots with the horizon line. Like that. Leaving that bottom tight edge there. And with a bit of luck, let me look in there. It's just the water just... Now see here those darker areas I put in there? We've got a... It's not in the picture, but it's just something I'm adding. Over here, I'm picking up that white paint again, and I want just the thinnest, let's say something here. I could probably use just this brush even, I don't know. Just the thinnest, keep it very straight. Something there. Get this brush, make sure it's very dry. And I'm just going to sit that down lightly. I'm touching it and moving it. I'm not just putting it on and pushing because I could dig the paint right down to the canvas. You don't want to do that. You want to on and off, on and off and feel that movement and that movement of the paint's going where you want it to go, okay? Yeah, he said, Ray, that's looking reasonable. That's it. That's all I want, just little effects like that. Probably a bit with here, just within there, coming smaller there, and do the same again. You're putting a highlight there, but in a controlled way. You've got it merging with the blue water, the dark shadow, and the movements you're doing with your brush, in my opinion, is all in cahoots with that horizon line. That way you don't get things looking crooked. Now, that might need another pass if I've lost too much of that glare. That's not too bad. And we do have quite bits of it here, which I can get a bit flatter. Get someone there. There we go. See, I've, when I dried it with the hairdryer before, I left it a bit rubbery. It's not 100% dry. It's kind of half dry and half wet, which makes it rubbery type. It's a good thing about acrylics. You can, if you stick with them, you'll learn so much about how they can work for you. Every paint has its pros and cons. Like if you're an oil artist, they take forever to dry. They Isn't that a bit of a downer? Now I'm gonna grab a small brush. Well, I'm just looking while you're waiting. I do have a small filbert. I'm trying to find him. Here it is here. I've got that one there too, there we go. So I've got a couple of, that's not the small filbert, where'd you go, small filbert, there it is. A small filbert and a kind of a large one. We want all these rocks out there. So before I do that, I've got to dry it. Karen Parker, you're watching it at work. Good to see you here, Karen. All right, where did I put those brushes? There they are, there they are. They're all the way down there, so I'm gonna pick them up and bring them down up here. Now, what I've got down here, I'll just move this bit of paper. Uh, now, I'll put a little bit more there just because I, I feel I need to. And that's just burn umber. Burn umber, nothing more, nothing less. And, and I'll just put for the, for the sake of the art piece a little bit of black there 
just in case I feel some of this might need some depth, but it's probably not gonna need a lot. Now, I wanna grab the burnt umber. Where are we? Get over here, you. All the way there. Now, just get it on your brush, and we're gonna do a lot of rocks on all this dark bit here. So here we go. If anything, we're gonna do them like that, but in a artistic way, a quick way, um, you know, about, and smaller. So we'll get some out of here. Out here. Now this brush used to be good when it was new, but it's not quite the best anymore. It's gone all frail and frayed and snotty now. I've dried my painting, but it feels like it's still a little bit wet and whatnot. I'm gonna slowly come bigger as they come towards me and make some gaps here and there, but there's a lot of, I'll just show you on the reference picture, this picture I got off Unsplash, so you get an idea what I'm up to. See there, that's what we're doing now. Simple but effective, look at that. Okay, back over here. It's always good to see what the reference is if there is a reference being used. So I'm going to, there is a lot of thickness concentrated. They're not really going over the horizon line. Got to keep loading the brush and turning the paint. Now, there's a distinct pattern in the way they're laid out in the um, reference picture. I'll try and get those gaps where they are, but I'm not going to get too feral or too mad about trying to get them dead exact. And if anything, everything here is in cahoots with the horizon line as well. Now this brush, as you can see, it's not quite doing a job for me. I'm picking up the other filbert. It's a brand newy. Let's see if we can get control ones here. Yeah. There we go. Get some more paint. Get some real tiny ones out here. Spread out. Try and keep them in cahoots. How's that looking? Yeah, not bad. I feel I want a smaller brush again even. I do have my... Um, where is it? I've got so many brushes in me thing now, I'm losing them all. Where did my... there it is. I'm just going to use my autograph brush. Just so I can get some dollops where I want them. Maybe some lines as well. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to turn it as I move it along. That's the way they should be. Got some bigger ones out. Yeah, look at that, less subtle but effective, eh? Now we've got a bit coming all the way here, some. I'll go to my other filbert now, these ones that are coming closer. And it's very, some of these are going on very translucent like, because the paint underneath isn't 100% dry. There's a big band of rocks right about here somewhere, so I'll put them in there as well. Just to create the illusion of what's there looks like it belongs there. Get level with your dag.
Every now and I glance over, I might see a name like Marie Vallon. There you go, Marie Vallon, Marie Vallon, something out here. Something out there. There's lots of little lonely ones out here. Isolated ones, they look the part. You've got a big one pretty much right out here on his own, which looks good. It sort of gets this area here some attention. So you just make the bottoms of them level, reasonably level. Ah, there's lots everywhere. Now there is a nice big one down here somewhere in the water right about here somewhere. So I'm just going to put it on and keep the bottom in cahoots with the horizon line. I'll use that filbert for that. Yeah, it's picking up that wet paint underneath. See what it's done? It's picked that paint up. So I can use that to my advantage and get a darker shadow around here because it's closer. So I'll get that like that. And it's mixing with that white. Then I'll get that brush and try and sit on some of that darker colour to sink that back. There we go. I can dry that later and really fix that up, but that's the gist of what's happening to that rock right there. Anything over here? How far have you got on there? There is a bit over here, very minimal. Now this would look very lovely in an oil painting, if you're an oil artist. You can really get these colours to move and merge together nicely. Some very little ones. How's that? How's that? It's all looking good. Now I would like to find some bits that just need the black in there. So what I'm going to do is give it a quick dry. Yeah, it's one of those examples, a good example of less is more. It's like you can overdo things. We all get caught overdoing things. Now I want to get just some depth in here if I can. So here and now I'm just going to get some black and really push in some pretty much at the base of all these rocks really mainly in this area here because they're all cluttered together. I really got to go to the art store and find some brushes, work out what brush is going to work for me doing little details like this because I don't really have anything particular for this type of work that I have set aside like I do like for my putter on a brush. So there we go, little bits of dark there. Probably put the slightest bit within that one there. No, it's not going to work, it's going to peel it off. This one here if we can. There we go, got some dark there. Just some dark, the darks really help it. Okay, now I'm going to wash that brush and grab the slightest bit of white, so I need some more white down here. Now I don't want it white, I want it glaze, I'm using glaze, so I'll bring you down here. I'll put these brushes in the tub to be washed. Now this is glaze, okay? Glaze medium, it's a gloss glaze. Now, I'm going to just hit it with a little bit of white. There we go, that's plenty. See how much I put in there? Not much. I didn't put much at all in there, eh? I put bugger all in there, absolutely bugger all. Now, I'm going to get me bullshit stick. Those people, the first time you hear my word bullshit, it's not a swear word, it's just a, it's an effect you can add to, add to your painting. Like, instead of someone saying, 
wow, that's nice. They go, bullshit, that's beautiful. That's the bullshit effect I use. Now, did I dry that? We'll find out. We just want to lace. Keep. That's why I got this stick, so we can use different heights and just get some water in there like it's lapping up in there. This is very minimal as well, but it's going to be there. Just sinking some of that and putting some light in there, some soft but noticeable light. It's slightly there in the picture. An untrained artist might not pick it up, or they might. A seasoned artist definitely will pick it up. Just something like that. Break it up a bit like that. See, this stick gives you, you can go up and down on it, giving yourself some horizontal lines. There we go. As you know, water, that's just, I hope that's, the camera's not really, let me see if it's picking it up. There we go. I could probably put little bits. I'm just looking in the monitor there. I could probably put little bits tucked in here. Just showing the effect of some water that got in between all these little bits there, you know. And it's these little things that help our paintings learn what subjects, I mean what mediums you want to use. And just remember, you don't have to overdo it. I, I have very minimal. If you were to actually come into my studio and see exactly what I got, there's not a lot there. You don't, don't feel you need to have tons of everything. Now this colour down here, I'm just going to grab a bit of that, which is down here somewhere there. A bit of black. I want it a bit darker. Get a bit of water in it. Make it slightly darker and very inky. And this is where you've got to be nervous. It's like when you're eight years old and you stole your first packet of chewing gum from the shop and you got away with it, but you were as nervous as buggery. This is how nervous you've got to be when you do this bit. <laughs> Just the littlest, how's that for darkness here? Yeah, that'll do. Very skinny, look at that. Nervous, shake like you're nervous. Shake like you almost got caught, but you got away with it, but you feel guilty. There you go, that's our guilty line. You don't want these big and thick. Break them up a bit. Go with the perspective of the painting. I'm twisting this brush as I'm putting it on. I'm twisting it and then I'll pull it off, reload it, and as I'm reloading it, I'm twisting the tip into that paint like that so the, the tip's loaded. Oh, this could be a little bit on the dark side, but it'll be all right. It just sits this water down on the sand there. Come all the way along, break it up, right off the painting there. And um, that's pretty much it. I'll put my autograph over here. I'll put it on this side in the sand. And then we'll whack a frame on it. And a painting like this would look quite nice in a frame. Now just remember, all my tutorials on YouTube are available to buy. Okay? Uh, they uh, include shipping and handling. They are 80 American dollars, payable through PayPal. And there's links below, show you what's available. Message me on Facebook if you want to purchase one. Uh, if you message me on Facebook, be sure to tell me you saw me on YouTube. That way I know you watched one of my shows and you're not a robot. Because there's so much of that going on now. There we go, Steve's little paw print. And now we'll whack a frame on that just to see how she's going to look. I reckon that'll look good in a frame. It'll look cracking hot. Cracking hot. I was going to say that other word, but you don't say that on camera. Here we go. That's not too shabby, eh? Very effective, zen-like painting 
less is more. There's not a lot going on in the sky, there's just some tones and values. Same with the clouds, I didn't put many clouds in there. And the water, it's not big mashing waves splashing here, it's just less is more. And just remember, you can do that, okay? I'll think of a name for this. And um, if you're new to my channel, share, like and subscribe. I do a live Q&A every Friday, 8 p.m. Perth, Australia time. That's where we connect, me and my audience. We're a team, you and me, and that's where we connect every week. You get to ask questions. Leave comments below if you want to ask a question, and I'll read it out in my Friday Night Live, the next Friday Night Live following this tutorial, okay? And just remember, if you like what I'm doing here on my channel, you make sure you tell your friends, okay? But if you don't like what I'm doing, tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.